Hello, my name is Barry Borlaug. I'm a professor of medicine at Mayo Clinic in Rochester, Minnesota, and I'd like to share with you the results and implications from a study we just published in Mayo Clinic Proceedings entitled Characterization of the Obese Phenotype of Heart Failure with Preserved Ejection Fraction, a Relaxed Trial Ancillary Study. We know that millions of people worldwide have heart failure, and roughly half of these patients have heart failure with a preserved ejection fraction. We've ascribed this to ventricular diastolic dysfunction for years, but we now know that there are several different phenotypes within the broader spectrum of patients with this form of heart failure. And one of the leading phenotypes that we've started to recognize is obesity. These patients appear to look different than others, but most of the previous understanding has been derived from single center studies uh, that can may be subject to referral bias and very specific patient populations. So in this paper, we aimed to uh, characterize this obese phenotype as compared to non-obese patients, looking at a broader multi-center cohort of patients that participated in the RELAX trial. The RELAX trial was a study testing whether sildenafil as compared to placebo could improve exercise capacity and a number of other relevant endpoints in heart failure, and that trial overall was neutral. We compared the patients with obesity, grade 2 obesity defined by a body mass index of 35 and above relative to non-obese patients with heart failure with preserved ejection fraction at baseline. And we saw a number of uh, very interesting relevant differences. As compared to non-obese patients, the obese HFPEF patients were a decade younger, uh, but they had worse symptoms, worse quality of life, more severe evidence of fluid overload indicating worsening heart failure, and they had poorer exercise capacity. Whether you look at submaximal exercise capacity as estimated by the six minute hall walk, or maximal exercise capacity using the more robust gold standard method of cardiopulmonary exercise testing, it was substantially poorer in the obese HFPEF patients. This is even more notable when you consider that exercise capacity normal de normally deteriorates as part of normal aging, and again, the obese patients were 10 years younger on average. We also looked at their hearts by both echocardiography and cardiac MRI, and we found greater evidence of ventricular remodeling and hypertrophy in the obese patients. They had biomarker abnormalities, evidence of greater systemic inflammation, and we do believe that obesity is, plays an important role in this disorder by causing low-grade inflammation, which may impair blood vessel relaxation and nitric oxide availability. Uh, and this was an important demonstration as well. We looked at some of the uh, surrogate markers that we often uh, associate with the severity of heart failure in patients with heart failure preserved ejection fraction, such as left atrial volume index and NT pro BNP uh, levels. And these have been shown in a number of studies to indicate that as LA volume gets higher or BNP levels get higher, there are worse outcomes. Despite the consistent findings of worse exercise capacity and more severe heart failure, pretty much across the board in the obese patients, we saw that left atrial volume and BNP were much lower in patients with the obese phenotype of HFPEF. And this is important uh, because it can lead to under-recognition of these patients. Um, obesity is growing to epidemic proportions in the United States and, and worldwide. Um, close to 40% of Americans right now are obese and uh, more than two-thirds are either overweight or obese. And we think that this, along with aging in the population, explains much of the increased burden of this form of heart failure in the population. A lot of times in clinical practice, these patients uh, with obesity who probably have HFPEF uh, present for evaluation and are perhaps falsely reassured that they don't have heart failure, that their breathlessness is simply due to deconditioning or just due to obesity itself. 
Uh, but one of the implications of these data is that we often need to be thinking more carefully uh, about heart failure and heart failure with preserved ejection fraction in these patients. And a lot of times um, referral for cardiology evaluation is, is necessary. Um, this study clearly shows uh, that these patients are more limited and they do have a number of important differences from um, non-obese patients. And uh, uh, we need to carefully consider that and probably come up with some specific therapies that are more targeted to this patient population, which again is, is growing um, at, a, at a very rapid pace. We hope you found this presentation from the content of Mayo Clinic Proceedings valuable. Our journal's mission is to promote the best interests of patients by advancing the knowledge and professionalism of the physician community. If you are interested in more information about us, our homepage is www.mayoclinicproceedings.org. There you will find access information for our social media content, such as additional videos on our YouTube channel or journal updates on Facebook. You can also follow us on Twitter. More information about healthcare at Mayo Clinic is available at www.mayoclinic.org. This video content is copyrighted by Mayo Foundation for Medical Education and Research.